Well, we're here at the workbench and Dave, you know, I'm not quite sure what I witnessed before we went to the commercial break. However, it does look like we got some things for Swordfish Show. Yeah, we're talking about Swordfish and, and mainly because, you know, the Swordfish has a, a lot of mystique around him. You know, he's the gladiator of the sea, really hard to catch and everything. And in reality, he's pretty easy to catch, especially in Texas. It's one of the best and easiest places to go and catch him because you don't have a whole lot of current offshore where these fish live in the deep water. And so that makes it a lot easier to fish for them in the daytime, because in the daytime, that's when they're all on the bottom. Now see, swordfish are one of those fish that make a big migration from the, from the bottom up at nighttime. And that's how we have traditionally always caught them at night. And because that gets them up in, you know, within four to 600 feet or sometimes 100 feet of the surface, because they're up there feeding on all the squid and stuff that makes that big, benthic migration they call it from the from the bottom to the top every mm -hmm. night it happens mm -hmm. millions of pounds of stuff comes up and the, and that's when the swordfish get in there and, and eat they're very aggressive fish they're the only bill fish i personally believe that use that bill as a weapon all the time i mean they use if if, it, if there's a big bait in front of them they're going to slash it if they feel threatened by anything they're going to hit it with that bill they use that bill as a weapon it's very sharp on the sides and they are very strong and can swing it and and they will and, and it, guy harvey says it's the only fish he won't get in the water with because he's had them come after him and i've the only fish i've had a lot of marlin and, and sailfish that we've hooked up make a big circle and you know wind up getting in the boat or slamming into the boat a swordfish is the only fish that i've ever hooked and actually had them attack the boat we mm -hmm. had one in venezuela that we hooked about 300 pounds and 1600 feet of water and we caught him in like six minutes he came straight to the surface came up about 50 feet away from the boat came down the side of the boat whacking the boat turned around went 50 feet out and came back and we were waiting with the gaff this time mm -hmm. and he whacked whacked and got whacked but then it was all <laughs> pandemonium after that but, sounds like a day of full of whacks oh it was a lot of whacking going but it was very very <laughs> very very strong very strong fish and they're really good you know really good to eat and off texas you know you got to go a little good ways you know 75 100 miles 200 miles sometimes you know you got to get to the water that's a thousand feet deep you know anywhere to a thousand to two thousand feet deep usually it's about as deep as you want to be dropping either with an electric reel or a, or a manual reel and uh in the daytime you want to get all your stuff in the bottom but i'm going to try to tell you how to catch one at night because it's probably it's a lot easier and you guys have to go out and do these long trips anyway when you're going off to the canyons and <coughs> going all offshore to hit tunas and blue marlins you might as well sink a bait at night and catch a swordfish and you can do it real easy. You know, if you buy you a couple of Baitmaster squid, either the trolling squid or the, you know, that one's actually a swordfish bait. But here's a good reason why you want to buy them. Look at all the intricate little uh, uh, stitching that goes yeah, on. Yeah, it's know. sewed on yeah, there. Yeah, they sew them onto the, onto the leader and sew his head on so he doesn't come apart. And those, that's a good size, that 12, 10 to 12 inch squid. It's not so big that a, a, a fish is going to want to come in there and get his bill all in it. Hopefully, he'll just come in and eat it. And it's on a 300-pound leader. That's just a, one that's not rigged. I just wanted to bring it and show one that mm -hmm. doesn't have a rig in it. But you can go out and buy these. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to get fancy. A, a big dead fish on a big 13-aught circle hook, a bonito, a dead bonito will work, a dead hardtail. Uh, the swordfish may be the gladiator of the sea. He's definitely not the Einstein of the sea. He's not that smart. He he's like a eat. catfish. He's man. like a big catfish with a <laughs> beak. So you know, any just about any type of bait you can put on there will work. And if you get, a, you know, if you run two baits, one at maybe 400 feet and one at 200 feet, and you fish out there all night on a good warm night on a thermocline, you know, right before the moon you will probably catch a swordfish, you know, anywhere between, you know, 60 inches to, you know, 500 pounds, you know, and, you know, use a nice, you, you know, you don't have to go crazy and use 400 pound leader, you know, you can use 300 200. pound, you could use a 200 pound into a 500 pound uh, bite leader or a 300 pound bite leader for your squids, which that's what it comes with. Mm -hmm. And you can use a 150 pound test for a nice shock. And I'd use that 80 pound braid on a 50 on a 50 wide. You can hold so much 80 pound braid on a 50 wide, you will never run out. And, and you don't need a big light, 80. Huh? Well, you always want to put a light on. You can use a Siloom stick 
or if you don't have these nice Lingerman LP lights, you can go to Linger and Pittman online. They supply all the guys who go out and swordfish commercially. So all those nice blinky lights, you want to put one about 30 or 40 feet away from your bait. And, or just buy Siloom sticks, really cheap alternative, and put one in your balloon as well if you put a balloon on the surface. Just fish like a catfish in 400 feet of water. All right.